Hello YouTube Buds. I hope all is well with you. I'm going to talk about my latest finished colored pencil work, Cold Cowboy of the Great Plains. And I will show you what I changed on the reference photos, combined some even, and decided how I would compose this a little bit differently than the main reference photo. I'm happy with the way that it turned out. I will show you some close-ups uh, shortly, as long as I don't fall out of this chair, which I almost did. <laughs> there is one prior video that shows this artwork partially finished that focuses on a technique using odorless mineral spirits, short name OMS abbreviation, and how you can use that to make the pencil look not gritty like traditional pencil and look like paint. There are many artists that use that technique, so you might enjoy seeing that one as well. Totally up to you. Let's move to my computer, and we will take a look in some detail on the photos I used and some of the decisions I made. All right, so let's head over to the computer, which is right over there. Here's a close-up of the finished art. I added some modifications to traditional cirrus clouds. These are kind of more cirrus, very high up, but I wanted a very windy look to go along with my idea that this is just post winter before early spring and that he's cold. And I thought of, there's a lot of factors that went into that. The main primary reference photo, he's very white looking anyway, which with the red cheeks, a little redder than normal, have that guy in very cold weather look. And I, I wanted to play off that. And the scenery being just end of winter, right before spring colors arrive. And that's why this is like a brownish green that I blend together with specks of a brownish color. A lot of that's in the coat as well. To have any subject, let's talk about the animal, the horse, be realistic, it's important to have the shadows correct and have those tones right. A careful viewer will see the lights coming from this direction, the sunlight, because it's darker down here. And this side of the neck is much darker than this side. And then you have creases. There's some skin wrinkles here. These details are all very important. This curve of the lighter um, cinnamon, I believe, was the color here. Light, dark, generally lighter, generally darker and very dark under the neck. And having that shadow on the one side, the underside, and the opposite side being sunlit gives this the three-dimensional look. And if you had all of the neck this color over here, it would look completely flat and it would not look like a three-dimensional subject. Another example, if the light's coming from this direction, that's why when I chose purple as shadow, the main shadow color, you have it under the neck over here and under the arm here it stays in shadow for quite a bit from here to here, but it's darkest under the arm and under the hand, behind and under this hand. That also creates a natural opportunity for contrast, actually. The light is here shining. Underneath, it's very dark and shadowy. That darkness helps you to see this white hand much better. And only the very edge, you can see where the edge of the hand begins in shadow. And it's a darker brown, shadow on this side, light on this side. This coat is creating a shadow here, underneath the coat, right here, and here, before the light catches it again after this curve. If you have a good reference photo, you will see and identify all these lights and shadows going on. This was a very furry horse that I kind of replaced 
head onto the other one. So I tried to give it a, sh a shaggy look to the fur. You can see the fur lines if you look closely. But he, the horse is still further enough away that you're not going to see the fur as detailed as you would if he or she was closer to you up here and the only subject in the painting. And the way I addressed that was to, using pencil only in this one, I created layers of undertones of like this color here throughout, then a bit of this color, and I blended them a bit using the OMS of Mineral Spirits and this color here. And then once those were all on there, then I put on any line work. This gets so dark, the lines and darkness don't show as much, and so I didn't show them. And you wouldn't want to show them in dark, dark shadow because they would disappear naturally. You can see lines here. The other place they disappear is in light. So in shadow, the lines disappear. In the strong sunlight, it's best not to have the fur lines. See, they're gone here. And the direction of the fur is important. I looked at that very carefully the fur lines and how long the length of the fur is is very important too. And so it's not gonna be a long streak line like the mane would be, long lines, long lines. Yeah, they're gonna be very short and stopping lines. So they are in this direction. Then around the thigh, they change direction and go this way. Down here, they're more vertical. Well, not quite vertical, but they, there is a change. They go like this way. Here they're sideways lines. Here they're this way. Here's more vertical, this way. So all that has to be paid attention to if you want the animal to look realistic. The whisker lines, the color pencil reserving the white space and not putting any color there. That can be tricky and these lines and the total disappearing in the whitest most area no fur lines i chose just to keep them he's distant enough you're not seeing many there are some but they're hard to see right on the edge there's more and let's talk about it using the computer images it was originally i was thinking a cool color theme but when i got to the horse to the blues and greens cool color and uh, purple shadows. Purple was a main shadow color throughout. And I, for consistency, you pick a shadow color. And even if it's over here, you're like, well, can I put it on the horse? And I picked it um, to be on top of a slightly darker section of this red violet, which is a very effective um, shadow color for a brown, orangey brown horse. So I moved off of cool color, and it really is more of a complementary blue-orange painting. And there's a lot of blue in him, too. But there's still, it's a nice mix, and there's purple in the landscaping. I changed the horse coloring somewhat. I, I went with brown, but I made it a more brilliant orangey brown. You will see I removed trees. I couldn't see well what was going on here, so I took a look at a couple other photos. Um, and I forget if this one's from Pixabay or Unsplash, but this was for positioning. I was trying to decide, okay, what's the general area look down there? These were fortunately somewhat at the same angle. That's what I was looking for is the angle. Not that this is black and white versus the other, but can you really see a whole lot back there, yes or no? And I decided, therefore, to fill this in based on my own judgment of where the hip meets the leg, because it's hidden here. You can't see what exactly is going on. I was comfortable looking at this one and then going with my own decision. Oh, well, this gives you an idea, too. Where does the curve start? How sharp is it? Where does it end? It can go all the way up, actually. Mine kind of ends up here. And I, I made it more subtle here. I kind of 
blended that out a bit and then the line is more crisp here. I didn't want the line when I first had it going all the way up to this point. And I completely substituted the coloring of the horse in terms of the mane though and the tail. This is the horse head I picked and uh, I went with a blondish, like a reddish blonde mane on this very orangey horse. You can see how I substituted this entire shape here on top of the other existing reference photo because I did not like the angle here of the head. It's a very sharp angle like that and I wanted it much more of a sideways look. So of course I had to remember the tail has to match the mane I picked and not make the mistake of doing the wrong color. And so I just made that up with some darker colors. I noticed here it was darker at the bottom. I followed that idea. Removing the tree, that I debated earlier on. I took this as my main reference to follow, but I wanted to make it a little sharper than this one. This is a very vague landscape. And to emphasize the flat look, I had this tree removed and had this prairie or uh, plains look, the Great Plains, flat land, go across the entire composition here. The other thing is the big sky idea from Montana, the Great Plains. I was thinking the Canadian area, Alberta, across the border to Montana was my idea. Very flat look. I hope you enjoyed that review of this painting, and I will um, get started eventually, um, probably with more pastel color experimentation. I got some pastel supplies very recently in the mail and I am going to continue to test those before actually using them in an artwork. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. All right? Bye.